This is Chris Hogg, who is the CEO of Digital Journal. I was wondering, Chris, why did you guys plan these events? I know this is your second one. We think Digital Journal wants to encourage discussion on media, on social media, and on new media. So the future of media, this speaker series, is designed to uh, bring together people from all sorts of walks of life, be it technical, social media, or traditional and uh, legacy media. When you bring them all into one room, the conversation that comes out of it, we think, is great. And I heard somebody say that there will be more of these. Yes. And, yeah. the this is the second annual uh, Future of Media that Digital Journal has put on. And with increasing demand, we're looking at uh, making this a, a more regular feature series, uh, speaker series, so that um, we continue the conversation of the future of media. Okay, and will the next area, will it be a little bit larger uh, scene? We, we've been fortunate enough to have huge demand and we've reached capacity really quickly for this event so uh, when we go forward we're definitely going to try to make sure that uh, the venue is appropriate for the number of people who want to attend this event. Thank you very much. Chris. Thank you. I'm uh, obsessed over two things uh, at Facebook. Um, the first one is uh, the continued growth of our user base and more importantly the engagement of those users on our platform. I think that uh, there's two big challenges right now. One is the economic challenge and that newspapers and magazines for that matter have to reinvent themselves from a financial model. That means slashing newsrooms. Um, the days of the high paid uh, reporter are long gone. It's not an upper middle class, middle class job anymore. It's for, and I hate to say this, it's for young cheap people. Um, to basically pump out as much content as you can. So whether it's uh, web updates, podcasts, I'm probably you know, showing myself to be a dinosaur of sorts. Sometimes. But I mean, the fact is that I get most of my news, I have a RSS reader with a couple hundred blogs on it, but I never read it anymore. I get most of my news from Facebook and Twitter. The challenge is that news organizations shouldn't always be developing everything. They should be partnering, and we have to get away from that aspect of we need to build everything ourselves. It's a very different environment when you're in an online environment and you need to produce product continually. Um, and that is not always the skills that translate into a traditional newsroom environment. Yeah, to be honest, I mean, you know, I mean, we're all, I mean, of all the social media activities out there, podcast is kind of like the ugly orphan in the corner, right? I can only answer you by giving you an example that um, during the G20, our reporter, Alex Pearson, uh, called in to our live blog um, a minute 30 report from the middle of Queen and uh, Spadina when the car was on fire and she was terrified and you could hear it in her voice and it was just a voicemail recording, no video that was done through Scribble Live it was the most compelling thing I have heard in years and it was on the live blog online by a television reporter so you know, I, specifically podcasting, I don't know. I, I, I've i never really done much podcasting. I, I think you guys probably have, but um, and you can speak to that. But just in terms of, you know, voice recording and audio, it still exists and it will continue to exist as a medium and a way to communicate and tell stories. We find it's one of the easiest ways to get a journalist to participate in being digital is send it, call it a quick audio file that we can make into a sound slideshow and put it over top of it. But um, I think we underestimate even at the Globe the, the value of podcasts and audio and, and having a comprehensive strategy around that. Sometimes people just want to listen to a conversation. So, I mean, we've used it in various